Hello, this video may be narrated by the YouTuber that you know as Kraut, but the script is not written by Kraut. This is written by Lonely Glitch and a group of Iranians. You may have seen me or heard of me if you took part in some of the Q&As or streams or are active in the Discord server. I am an Iranian friend of Kraut, and I ask Kraut permission to use his platform to bring you a message. I would like to ask you for a moment of your time because I have something important to tell you. As you may have heard, there are ongoing nationwide protests in Iran. What sparked these protests was the murder of a 22-year-old Kurdish-Iranian woman from the small city Sekes called Maza Amini, also known as Sina. On the 16th of September 2022, the Islamic Republic's so-called morality police murdered Maza by beating her into a coma for improperly wearing her hijab. Maza was visiting the capital city, Tehran, to see her friends and family. That was when a morality patrol van kidnapped her. According to other detainees inside the police van, officers repeatedly beat her head to the side of the van. And based on the CAT scan images confirmed by regime news outlets, she had extreme levels of damage done to her brain tissue, which ultimately took her life and shocked our country. This is our everyday story as Iranians, ever since the existence of the Islamic Republic. 44 years of an Islamo-fascist regime that uses its citizens as mere disposable assets in its dystopian ideological delusion. And it has devastated our country. My country used to be a beautiful one, where there was hope, music, dance, history and culture. But now all we do every day is bury our hopes, our dreams, our reputation and our family members. Under the rule of velayat e faqi the guardianship of the cleric ideology, human rights have been virtually non-existent for the past decades. Corruption, mismanagement and embezzlement by regime officials and the absurd amounts of money they spend on funding militias like Hamas, Hezbollah and Houthis make our lives harder every day. Meanwhile, the regime continues its oppression of women, intellectuals, religious and sexual minorities and whoever else they deem as unwanted. They've designed a massive propaganda system to brainwash citizens as early as the first grade to create a society subservient to their ideology. But they failed. Ever since its existence, we have rejected the propaganda and kept growing as a society independent from the regime. We fought the propaganda and managed to use the internet as our last bastion of freedom to spread awareness. This has not been pleasant to the clerics, as you might have guessed. And now we've had enough, and we are ready for change. Although Iran has never experienced true democracy, the fight for the rule of the people has been an over-century-old struggle for our nation. We have not stayed quiet against the regime's oppressions throughout these years. You may have not heard much about our struggle, about how the regime shut down the internet and murdered over 1,500 people in three days and in cold blood during the November 2019 protests. We are a society that despises the backward and inhumane laws that its regime enforces on it. We are not extremists. We are not Islamists. We are tired of living life under a totalitarian regime that wants us to eat, speak, dress up, behave and think the way it desires. A regime with no accountability and no hope for reforms in any capacity. Ever since the death of Maza, every fragment of our society has been shaken. As we enter the second week of nationwide protests and strikes, the regime is using its anti-riot, Iranian Revolutionary Guard, police, plain coast, secret police and Basij militias to crack down on protesters. The shooters in the streets trying to protect a regime that is no longer legitimate to the eyes of the people. As we are leading the protests by expressing who we are, chanting women, life, freedom, they have cut off access to the internet in an attempt to silence us. But the world has seen who we are this time. The world has seen the bravery of our women, burning their hijabs and cutting their hair as a sign of protest against a system that has desperately tried to subdue them for all these years but has failed to do so. 
This isn't merely about morality police, as some might frame it to be. Men, women and children are risking their lives standing against security forces who have no problem shooting them as they chant, We will fight, we will die, we will take back Iran. What we do is about freedom and justice. It's about our hopes and shaping our future. And it's about taking our country back. And like any revolution, we may succeed or we may fail. But our fight and our struggle continues. And this is where you come in. Now you may be thinking, what can I do? I don't personally live in a country with an accountable political system. I have never had the chance to be represented by anyone in the government. But you do. As we continue our lives in pain, children and relatives of the regime's officials, alongside propagandists and lobbyists, live freely in your democratic countries. They live luxurious lifestyles with the money they get through corruption and embezzlement. They live their lives the same way that people in Iran get prosecuted for for doing so. These people are an elite and oligarchy class that lobby and spread propaganda and misinformation while undermining Iranians abroad who try to bring light to these crimes. They live in Canada, the United States, Germany, the Netherlands, United Kingdom, France and a lot of other Western countries. I humbly ask you, as a citizen of a democracy, to write your representatives in Parliament and ask them to investigate the regime's echo chambers and its corrupt cronies abroad, who we call the Agassiz. Ask them to sanction regime officials who murder people in Iran. You might be surprised to know that key people running Iran's morality police or security forces are not even sanctioned in many of the countries you live in and can freely travel there. Particularly if you live in Canada, you can join the Association of Families of Flight PS752 victims in their struggle for justice and holding Canada's government accountable to include the Iranian Revolutionary Guard in its list of terrorist organizations for shooting down a civilian plane that killed 176 innocent passengers, including a lot of Iranians and the flight crew. You can check their website at www ps752justice.com. And one last thing. The regime is actively trying to silence us. Our campaign and protests continue. I myself have had an extremely difficult time connecting to the internet and getting past the abysmal level of censorship. We may experience another nationwide internet blackout like in 2019. I could lose my voice and my connection to the rest of the world any moment now. And when the regime cuts the internet, the regime kills. They bank on the world looking the other way to commit atrocities in the dark. Spread the word. Every tweet, every video, every discussion and every letter counts. Let the world know who we are, what we've been through and what we are fighting for. Just recently, the hashtag Maza Amini has broken the record as one of the most used hashtags on Twitter, with its Persian variant being repeated over 90 million times in a week. Be a part of our family. Use your platforms and speak up. Don't let her name be forgotten. As our great Persian poet Nizami Ganjavi once said, there's much hope in despair. The end of the dark night is bright. I look forward to talking to you again in a brighter future.